Welcome to Season 4 of Book Eaters Podcast. This season we'll be exploring the best books of the year. One might call them literary darlings. But how are we going to decide that, Michelle? We aren't. We're going to leave that to the experts. Each episode we will defer to one of those experts. Goodreads, the Pulitzer, Publishers Weekly, the Audis. Okay. To see how they hold up. And if we can keep up. Abel will read the book. And Michelle will listen to it. Then we'll pour ourselves a drink. Or two. This season we're making classic cocktails. And then we will take a sip down literary lane. For some bookish banter. Join Join us. us. Let's dive right in. The expert of this episode is Amazon. If you're wondering what it means if you see an Amazon bestseller or Amazon chart sticker on a book in Kindle or Audible or just a standard paperback book on an Amazon listing, then perhaps I have some answers for you. You might think this is a book that is highly rated and I like things that other people like, so I will certainly enjoy it. You may be right, but that isn't exactly what it means. Any book that has reached a top 100 spot in any specific category on Amazon will get an Amazon bestseller sticker. Is it possible that the book was offered for free during the period that it reached its acclaimed status? Yes. Is it possible no one has read that book after they added it to their library? No. Also, yes. Is it possible that the author had an ad running during that time to let you know that the the book was for free during that time. Also, yes. You might also be wondering, how narrow are the categories? Just how many categories are there? Any guesses, April? 20. There are over (gasps) 16,000 categories. So what a bestseller sticker on an Amazon book really means is that this book is in the top 16 million books that have been sold on Amazon during a specific time. That specific time frame is not indicated. Could be 30 seconds, could be 15 minutes. So even free books count as sold books. Yes. So it doesn't mean a whole lot. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the book is bad either. April and I have chosen one that sounded interesting. And this one also has an Amazon chart sticker. Now, this sticker means it's in the top 20 most sold books of the week. And the book we chose, Never Lie by Frida McFadden, is actually on the number nine spot today, which is August 25th. We recorded this way in advance for when you guys are actually going to get to hear it. So that's, you know, not bad. It's also, uh, coincidentally, a book club selection for a couple of different friends oh yeah so i mean in this case i feel like it is a pretty well read book at of the moment yeah it's not a bad selection i think we did well all things considered amazon (laughs) never lie is a story about a young couple looking for a house to buy they are stranded alone during a showing at an impressive house in the middle of nowhere with no phone service a snowstorm has made it impossible for them to leave Upon breaking into the empty home, they discover that it was once owned by an infamous psychiatrist who went missing some time ago. Our happy newlywed couple, Trisha and Ethan, must spend the night in the abandoned house with only cold cuts, a loaf of bread, and mayonnaise to eat. (laughs) If there's someone else in the house with them, they don't know. Is the ghost of Dr. Adrian Hale not missing but in fact deceased? Who keeps moving the pictures around? And where do those extra footprints in the dust come from? Those questions were answered in two narratives, one in the past by Dr. Adrian Hale and Trisha's in the present as she basically ransacked this house and listened to tape recordings of Dr. Hale's patient session, sessions. Patient sessions. That was a pretty good summary. I take issue with one part. Which part? I wouldn't say they broke into the house. I think that's your lawful good coming out. Okay, there so was a key. They were supposed to be there for a they? showing. Were they? Do we know that they, we do now know that they were not supposed to be there for a showing. Whoa, and whoa, you're going fact, way to break in. I'm just saying if we're going to argue my synopsis being incorrect. I have to present okay. all of the facts and evidence. And the facts and evidence suggest that they were not supposed to be there. I do see your point now. Carry on. Okay. So for the drink, (laughs) I have chosen a Negroni with a twist. And no, my TikTok friends, it is not with a Prosecco. April, as you know, does not like bubbles. There's just like this weird thing on TikTok. I don't know if if you're on TikTok where they go, a Negro. You you, you 100% know that I am not on TikTok. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like a flirty thing. Like if you say you want a Negroni with a twist, it's a, it's a, a spot. Hold on. Spadiato? Spadiato? I have no idea. It basically means mistake in Italian. Oh, cute. Essentially, like, I guess the story is um, that some random bartender at some point, like, mistakenly put Prosecco instead of gin in a Negroni. And people loved it? And people love it. And it, so it's called a Negro Spaglia. So it's like a mistaken Negroni. Oh, that's well. cute. Yeah. So and there's like a whole thing on TikTok where people like, I mean, it's been a minute. Did you know that the Negroni is my current favorite cocktail? I did not know that. That's so, very exciting. That is very exciting for me. Very exciting. But tell us about the gin. So I decided to break, uh, to use the blood orange gin that April bought me for my birthday. And why do I do that, Michelle? Um, because I love blood orange. No. No. Why because you, you make the best blood oh, orange brownies. Brownies, yeah, I do make good brownies. The the Negroni with this twist has one part Campari, one part sweet vermouth, and two parts gin. And I chose the blood orange gin in part because I wanted to use it, but also because I thought that it would make the drink even more bitter as a twist. Because I am extremely bitter. About the twist in this particular novel. There was more than one twist. I'm bitter about it. I'm really, I'm not happy. Also. I'm going to put that out there. Um, the cover of her book that played a large part of the story was Anatomy of Fear. And she fought hard for the cover of that to be a bloody blade on the cover. Oh, that's true. So, the bloody, bloody orange. Also, you know. Cheers to you, Michelle. Thank you. Where is mine? Cheers. You can really taste the Campari, though. I love Campari. It's like heavy Campari, yeah? Yeah. I do love the idea that you looked for a drink with a twist. That was a very clever way of tying in. Because, as I'm sure you do, as we're reading these books, we're trying to think of a drink that would dovetail nicely. Right, because they only drink wine in the in the book. And it did not. I it, The twist was a nice twist, Michelle. Mm, thank you. <laughs> So let's get right into it. Okay. Let's talk about what buttered our bread. Okay. What did you like about the book? I thought the pacing was really good. You know, the, the chapters were short. Mm -hmm. I was able to read it in a day and a half. I thought the red herrings, many of them mm -hmm. were quite good, especially... <laughs> if they had borne fruit. So yeah, the I loved the pacing of it. I loved the little sprinkling of red herrings, some of which were quite good. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought some of the writing was really good. Not any of the dialogue or descriptions of the people or clothing, but um, I remember like little phrases like, you know, her her pallor was bone white and the descriptions of the landscape and the quietness of the snow. A lot of that was really good. Okay. And better than what I could do. Okay. And that's all I've got. Um, I liked, um, there, I had a thing and I've forgotten what it was. There you was had the, one thing? You had one thing for? Uh, um, yeah, no, there was, so... I just, it's, let me think what it was. I there. I mean, I thought that the the story. I like the story in general. I, I like the idea of the story. Oh, yeah, the premise was fantastic. I thought it was really neat. Like I um, enjoyed that, and yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't like it. Well, it's, well okay. Well, let's just I go just right in. I just didn't. I'm trying to think of what I liked about You're it. You're right. I, I love enjoy the, it. I love the idea that the city folk, they're newlyweds. They both want this rem remote place where they can grow a family. They think they found the perfect house, but there's a backstory. Right, right away she thinks you know, something really bad happened there. But so they accidentally get there and they can't leave. So this is my problem. And the building with it. Of, and the building of all of that. My, she did very well. My problem with that is that Hang the on. building all of that was all well, a lie. No, we're not it was what, all what, 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 a lie. We're not getting into the bathwater. You don't yet. like to be lying. Just wait to. Just wait. The other right. thing the other thing all right. that she did very well was that creepy building of it. All of that was very yeah. good. When she did, you know, 
Why is there a half glass of water on the counter? Why is there cold cuts? And right. And then like Ethan, it kind of felt like he, maybe Ethan was. Why was, was the light on? So I he, thought. It felt like he was like gaslighting her a little bit. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. There, like, was, there was a lot of that. Like he must have heard well, it. But I he wanna, said he didn't. I want to leave the Ethan part out of it because that makes me I'm very just saying angry. that's something that I liked about it. Was but. That those things were there. Yes. But, I thought it was building toward a haunted house. Yeah, you know, me too. White... But, like because right when she gets there, she's like, "I have a bad feeling. Something really bad happened in this house." And as long as and the light was on, and the picture that they had taken down, and now and it was up, up, and then it was wall. down again. Yeah, I mean, all of that. If it had actually been a haunted house story, mm-hmm. would have been great. But right. we can't get past any of it. And let's get back to the bathwater because I'm with you. She cheated. She's an unreliable narrator, and the fact that that that. Like, the very first thing we see with this is she says she has a feeling that something bad happened there. Fuck you. You know what happened there. Like, you can't say you have a feeling when you know what happened there. Like, you're the narrator. That's, 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 it's unconscionable. Let me like, say- she broke the contract with me. Like, as soon as I yes. found out what happened, I was like, I'm out. Yes. Like, I'm angry and I can't, like, like, yeah, and the whole there thing were with lots like- of other things about the story I did not like. And like, the, the whole, uh, no. yeah, the, the, the. The, the the hard cold facts is she cheated. Once the twists, plural, right, are revealed, you can go back and re- I didn't and I I did I went back and read just like the first few chapters, and it doesn't hold up. It, it does doesn't. not hold water because she lied. She, she cheated. She cheated. Yeah. The whole thing, even like with Judy, that like. Where's Judy? You knew Judy wasn't going to fucking be there. You knew the whole time. And then, I mean, it would have been fine if, like, she wasn't talking to me, the reader. You know what I'm saying? If she was talking to someone else, anyone else, I then mean, it's fine. I but gave, she was talking to me, the reader, and she fucking I give a pass lied. for some of it because no, little things no that passes. she would say, little things that she would say, like, uh... I have a bad feeling about the house. I'm okay with that because maybe she thought she could come back to the house and she it wouldn't affect She literally was her. trying to get to the house. That was her whole fucking plan. And maybe maybe she didn't expect that when she got there, it would affect her the way that she did. I gave a lot of passes, no but grace. it does not... Like, no one of the things... No grace. One of, like, okay, here's an example. Here's the things that I could not forgive. Right. Okay. She finds the secret room with all the tapes. Okay. Well, before that, she finds a tape recorder. And how which she was, describes the which tape was very record. carefully placed in advance, which I appreciated. Like but, that was something I like. I was like, "Oh, that's right. We knew that there's a tape player." Fantastic. No, but but if you go back and listen to it, yeah, what how she describes finding the the tape recorder uh-huh. is she was like, "Oh, here's this tape recorder. I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid, and my parents had one, but that's it." No, you were a patient of Doctor Hale's, but Doctor so, Hale didn't tell them. No, that they she were being even recorded. said that. Yes, at the end, she said, "I probably even signed a contract." She knew she was being recorded. She didn't say she saw the recording. Like I would let she that. I would let that knew. slide because, like, okay, well, Doctor Hale okay. hid the recorder, and then Doctor Hale even herself said it's, that the only person that ever noticed it was the IT guy. It, it's so funny that we remember different things. Okay, but we can both agree that when she found the secret room of tapes. The fact that she selected PLs, mm-hmm. right? Right. She had to have known because she'd already figured out the labeling system. So as soon as she realized that her tapes were there, she wouldn't have casually picked one to listen to. She would have went to the one where Dr. Hill is letting her know, I know you're a fraud and that you are not, in fact, a, a victim. You killed the people that you said. I'm just saying, like, oh. no one in the story is likable except the, i thought about this too i agent? thought about i thought no well she the was it a, guy yeah luke i mean that's the thing at the end of the day everybody that got killed mm-hmm. i'm like eh, is it a huge loss for society but luke was a good guy well you know there's a garden but he died yeah all right let's get back to the okay so that was one thing we all agree i mean i, I can't get past like, that's it full stop you broke the contract with me as a reader. Fuck you. And I cannot be any more vehement about that than than I am. Like, if you, well, you the, cannot be like, this is the story that you're reading. And then partway through the way, be like, sorry, this is not the story that you're reading. It's interesting to me that it is. It's not okay. It's interesting. I to hate me. it. I hate unreliable narrators to begin with. Oh. And one badly done like this is like, forget it. If I may say. You may say. I actually do love an unreliable narrator yeah. story. I've tried to pitch the idea no. to you for an episode a few times. Because when it's done well, 
it's really good. But this wasn't an unreliable narrator. Yeah, it was. This was a liar. This yeah, was she never lied. I mean, when, when when it is done well, an unreliable narrator, you're shook. And then it all holds up. You can read it three, four, or five yeah. times. It's like the sixth sense. Sure. You know, it will hold up and you can go back and find the clues and you're not being lied to. It was there for you the entire time. That that is not what happened. I mean, that's a in technique. This, this is this was a full on broken con- like you know what I'm saying? Like like I yes, just, I'm just saying don't judge unreliable narrators by this. So even before the book. unreliable narrator, I, something occurred to me because I like crime fiction. I didn't like notes on the edu- an execution. I was going to say. I didn't enjoy that, but like I respected it. I have no respect for this novel. Mm. And I think that part of what that is is I'm a bit of a snob. I didn't realize this before, but I like literary writing. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, like, when I think about, like, S.A. Cosby is a crime writer that I like to read, right? The writing is very literary. It's very, like, compact, and the world building is very good, and you get very immersed in it. And um, most of the things I read, like fantasy and sci-fi, it's the same. You have, there's a, the author has to put a lot of energy and effort into taking me there and explaining all of the things to me, right? This, this book, and also the last one we did, the Colleen Hoover it's very simple. The I, writing is very simple. So you the are The dialogue just, is very simple. You are and just. And I don't enjoy it. And I think the reason is me. Because I just am sort of a snob. And I hate that. You are but just as big a, a snob as I am. I th- uh, did you say? Yeah, I think maybe. Not as big as you, Avi. No. But I felt like you hated similar. this book more than I did. I did because I don't like to be lied to. Yeah, but she, it was uh, she has a craft, and it was skillfully done. I don't see that. There, it's it's pandering to the masses, which is why it is so popular. It's like the Thomas Kincaid. It's like the other book that I, the Debbie McComer books that I pan so yeah, much I mean, in I, this podcast. I, the yeah. the Jody Picoult. Oh, what's the name? What do you say? Pico. Pico. I think you know. Um, it's it's that sort of thing. It's the people don't want to think. They don't. You know what it's called? It's a. Uh, Somebody was telling me a popcorn thriller. You yeah. just expect there to be holes, and people are okay with it. But I'm not one of those people. Yeah, I, I, I need it to match up. Honestly, if if there hadn't been an unreliable narrator, I probably wouldn't be this angry. I'm fine with it being. But I probably would have still done three and a half stars on Goodreads instead of the two it got. It's really hard to get a two rating from me. No. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I, you gave it a... What? We haven't done the rating well, yet. Well, I'm not saying our rating. I'm saying what I get on Goodreads. Like, I probably would still have, have been like, all right, it's fair. Well, here's... I do love an unreliable narrator. My problem is that she cheated. So, like, with, oh, mm-hmm. so for example, okay, if you are going to have red herrings... Right, I, which are great because too easy, to, too t- too many times it is easy to predict where it's all going. Right, but number one, it was so obvious that, that she was leading you to believe that Ethan was because EJ. of the EJ, yeah. So fine, you did that, and it was somewhat effective. But when it didn't match up, there should have been explanations, and there weren't. Like, why did he know so much about the same kind of wines that? EJ, you know, Ethan talked about the same, like, really obscure wine that... Oh, like, why did they both know about yeah. the same one from the same and, place? And when she was listening to the recording of EJ, mm-hmm. she even said that his voice was familiar. Why was it familiar? Because she met him. No, that never happened in the book. Yeah, no. it does happen in the book. She meets him at the casino... And oh, she, oh, okay. Well, then she gets a pass for that. Okay, that part she checks out. She doesn't get out. a pass for that. It's more unreliable narrator. No. She should totally have known no, who it was. If you're looking at it as parts of the story, fine. That red herring bears out because she did explain it. But there were so many more that she did not explain. And the wine being one of them. Uh, the wine doesn't bother me at all. Like, they, they were both, both of those men were like wealthy, obnoxious Ah, uh, that really bothered me. Men, it it checks out that they would know about wine. The same, like, it was, I can't even remember it now because it was so obscure. It was, it was like a w- wine from Africa. No, well, that was one, but there was also the malt shit. It was always his favorite wine and he that ordered was, it. That was just the, that was just EJ that did it. That had nothing to do with Ethan. 
No, it had, but they were both, both. It said, she mentioned that it was Ethan's favorite wine. And then in the backstory, EJ's explaining, oh, which was another thing that I liked. I she, if she did a pretty good job, you know, sort of demonstrating what a narcissist sounds like, mm-hmm. you know, with like, oh, yeah, I interviewed and I killed it. Of course, they, they're they going to be clamoring to have me work for yeah. them, but I just don't think they're good enough for me. And, no, I think that was, but, yeah. but also, did she do research on what a psychiatrist should sound like? Well, that is another bathwater thing for me. I mean, I did sort of like that she, you know, how how soon did you figure out that Dr. Hale was not so great? Like as soon as I found out that she was publishing stories about her patients? Oh, psychiatrists do that all the time. Though. Do they? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. I don't know. She just didn't seem... Because at first I gave her a pass because I thought maybe she was on the spectrum in some sort of way. Because she did seem like she was on... She definitely had some sort of mental... She didn't have empathy. I felt like she for lacked me, empathy for sure. Yeah, for me, it was the way that she treated her editor, Paige. Oh, right. She got her like to think about her eye, and then yeah, she and then the like thing. and cut her finger, and then just like, and then I had the, that was a big disconnect for me too because she's a psychiatrist, very mm-hmm. proud of her abilities in that, but she couldn't manage EJ also, and his manipulative bullshit. Also, like she saw the she saw the the publisher on the on her phone walk up she doesn't have the security system installed until later oh i think she was just looking through the window i felt like she was like looking at her phone and then i was like then later she gets a security system installed oh i thought of another um buttered bread thing oh good because we're so desperate for this the house sounds fantastic yeah i would love to live there the house was interesting i like the Stephen King was the. That's another thing. The They've book. never explained why The Shining was the one that would open the secret room. I mean, if I was a psychiatrist, a book about a crazy person, about the ability of going crazy in a house, maybe. I don't know. I just wish that. Cool that had, I just there's a lot of things, uh, and a lot of it felt like she maybe is under contract and just needed to like pump out a book really fast. And if that's the case, Frida, I will challenge you. You had a really good premise. There's a lot of things about this book that should have worked. And maybe you were under the gun, you know, and so you just had to get something out super fast. Don't let this be the end. Go back. Redo this. And fix you. I mean, in your heart of hearts, you know what these problems are. You love books just as much as we do. You know. Mm, I have no grace. I felt lied to. I felt betrayed. I did not enjoy it at all. I actually enjoyed it, but I was ashamed of it. And I'll... and then and then I was mad because I really had faith that she was going to tie it together. And then probably five, ten, no, that's half, eight tenths of the way through, I was like, nope, there's no, it's over. It, I kept waiting for that Hail Mary, like late quarter dunk where it was all going to be like, she is a genius. But no, no. She's just a liar. I I would say a cheat. She cheated. Uh, I mean, the book was called Never Lie. I guess we were warned. Whatever. It's, I, I, um, yeah. So what's funny about this is that I added this book to my Kindle like six months ago. And when you add something to your Kindle, it automatically shows up as currently reading on your Goodreads. Wait. Are you saying you contributed? Oh my God, we both contributed. Yeah. To so this being. Yeah. So I, so it was for like six months, it was on my Goodreads. It's currently reading. And I don't know, I read pretty quickly. So generally speaking, books show up on my, on my good, it's currently reading for like, you know, a couple of days. It usually takes me like a week max to finish a book. And so I'm at book club. One of the book club members was like, yeah, I just finished that book. And, and she was, loved it. She loved it. She said that she, she thought, oh, the twist. She's like, you won't see it coming. You won't have any idea what's going on. And because, I was like, it, because someone lied to us. So, uh, I, and I usually, if she likes. That's not good enough. It's not good enough for me not to see that it's coming. <laughs> usually, usually. We I have to not see that it's coming because you are smarter than me. And this was not what happened. No, no. You can dr- pour some more. Apparently you need more. Um, but so I'm getting very vehement now. <laughs> anyway, so apparently, like for six months now, everyone's been thinking that I've been slowly like absorbing this book, when in fact I just 
never read it. So, I, like, the, I don't think anybody. The Perfect Marriage is another one that I added on Kindle, and I read like a chapter, and then I was like, oh. I feel like you're talking to some very specific people right now. What? Like your Goodreads followers. I'm like, hey, <laughs> FYI, I haven't finished The Perfect Marriage. Well, no, I here's what I mean. I feel like everybody knows. Nobody really understands what makes things on Goodreads happen. Mm-hmm. So whatever alert I get, I'm just like, they don't know it any more than I do. I don't know what my Goodreads tells people about oh me. Oh, my God. So, like, if somebody who's, whose respect I have for their books, they're reading a book and they tell me they like it, then I will add it to my yeah, I'm not. My that, list. I'm not that involved. I use Goodreads mostly to remind me of books that I want to read, and books mm-hmm. that I loved and might want to reread, and books that I started and hated Who and you? aren't worth the finishing, or books that I started didn't get into them, but that could be me and not the author. So I'm going to give them a second try. So even though this isn't a Goodreads episode. Amazon. Oh. Amazon. Oh, sorry. Amazon sorry. does own Goodreads, so it's fine. <gasps> um, I one time had to read a book for book club, and I had forgotten that I'd read it. And like I started to read it, and I was like, "Why is this familiar?" And then I looked on Goodreads, and I'd already read it like two years ago. How does so it make you, to know that. How does it make you feel now that when you say I had to read something for book club, I'm not sure what you mean. Which book club? <laughs> I have three. I have three book clubs. It's fine. I'm in one of them. You are. And I haven't read that book yet. I will. I can. I'm not going to influence you. Okay. It'll influence me. Okay. So, wow, we both hated it. I'm not surprised. I, okay. I was not, like, part of me was like, I'm not going to talk to April about this beforehand, but I'm not surprised that you didn't like it. Although I thought that you wouldn't like it for different reasons. What reasons did you think? Um, because the, the writing. I actually was impressed by the. Maybe because I did go into it with very low expectations, but some of her descriptions were quite good. I mean, I didn't ever feel like lost, right? Like sometimes I'm reading a book and I feel oh, no, there was like the a whole little thing. lost. I don't understand. I never all... felt lost. I felt like I knew exactly what was happening. I knew exactly where we were. When we were jumping back and forth in time, it was very concise. Like sometimes when I'm reading books, and they go back and forth in time, like in a perspective mm, jump. Right. I get right. confused. That did not happen. She, I knew yeah. what was happening. I you knew where I was. That was a piece of buttered bread. That's, you a, that's a piece of buttered bread. I knew what was going on. At no point was I ever like, that's a word I don't know. Like it was very, <laughs> it was very like, it was, it was very like straightforward. And I and I yes, that is true. I did not Google anything reading. I this do book. also feel like I knew the characters at the end. There was no point where I Googled anything. I, Demon Copperhead absolutely Googled right, a lot. Yeah. I did not highlight anything. <laughs> I was like I said, I got through it super quick. But, Which hey, let's talk about this for a second because okay. I don't think we've done this enough right. this season. I read it. Mm-hmm. You listen to it. Do you yes. think that affected anything? Because I have to believe that maybe I have less of a hard time than you because I was reading Oh, my it. God, yes. Let's talk about the narrator for a hot second. Oh, was she good? hated the narrator. Was that, it? Which is probably, like, like... It was Waylon, wasn't it? It wasn't fucking Waylon. <laughs> Julia? You take it down a notch. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't remember what her name was, but my she... Pro- my problem with Julia Waylon, let's just make this clear, is that... I've heard her voice so much because she narrates everything. Because she's fucking amazing. But she. Um. Anyway, this narrator, I'm not going to say who she is. I have because I don't remember. But I have no, I have no good things to say about her. Like her, I mean, I do think good things. I mean, she was fine. Like she pronounced all the words correctly. I think uh, the pacing was fine. I listened to it, I think like one six five. But her voice was so like sickeningly sweet. So you're not treating this season like you would the Audis no. where out of Did you auth- want me to for like you know authenticity and like no I'm reading have- it the way that I read any book okay if you want me to read it to me that is one no to me that is authentic so. I will read it at one but I um so sh- her voice was very like sh- she was Dr. Hale and that like sort of like sweet like, overly nice, but underlying she's an evil bitch. 
voice. Okay. Well, th- that sounds great. Which was fine, except for she was out for both characters. Mm. And at first, I did not think that the, um, what's her name? What was her name? I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Not the not the Hale, but the other chick. The main character? What was Trish? Her? Trish. I didn't think Trish was a bad person. I thought she was just stupid initially. Right. Same. Same. Um, so I was like, why is this the voice for Trisha too? Like, I, can't she vary it a little? Mm. And then at the end, I'm like, oh, because they're both psycho. That's mm. why. Um, although Trisha. Was there a different narrator for Ethan? No, there was no Ethan. Was there an Ethan check? No, but I just was wondering if. No, it was just the two. It was just the same check the whole time. And I didn't like her voice. So that was probably a disservice. Because I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy her voice. I had to, like, get past that. Yeah, I definitely had to. I, well, I mean, that's the thing with reading. I had different voices for everybody. I mean, I do. I do, too. Right? And when you're listening? Even when I'm listening, there, there there's, a there's like, a thing that happens where I'm like, okay, I'm this character now. And, and most oh. of the time, most of the time, narrators do that shit for me. This narrator did not. You know, they vary it a little. She didn't. If especially if the author is any good at it, where why they're they're using a different voice for a different character. No, once I start listening to the audiobook, I cannot hear any other really version. You of don't it. like that's why I'm very hesitant I mean, to it, commit myself to the audio version because I look, we talked about this in the first season. Mm-hmm. Once I give myself over to the audio version right anything that i would come up with in my own head is gone but you're saying you still have that yeah so it's weird too like i'm, I'm thinking specifically there is there's a horror author that i really love and the book i think my heart is a chainsaw is the name of the book and it's the sequel to that book actually there's like seven different povs there's so many povs in the story but like all of the povs do like, one thing that's the same, that's, like, the author's thing. Hmm. And, like, I catch it, and it, it snags me every time. Hmm. I'm like, why would that character say it like that? I feel like I understand why that character would say it like that. Why would that character Like, it snags me every time. It's interesting because a lot of our brain chemistry is the same. Yeah. We've talked about that before. But in our perceptions, do you know what your, like, Myers-Briggs is? ENTJ. ENTJ. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What are you? ENTP. Ah. But sometimes INTP because I'm very extrovert, introvert. I'm ambivert. So it depends on my mood when I take that. But, Some, the, but the I and the E changes, but everything else sometimes is the, NTP. I'm definitely NTP. Sometimes the judging changes to feeling. Oh, well, wait. So put it ENTJ in. becomes ENTF. Oh. Depending on my mood, I think. Any of you budding psychology majors out there, explain Michelle and our our link to each other. I mean, I, I think it's just that we're proximity. And oh, like, like when two ladies spend enough time together, they get their periods in sync. Yeah, what's that called? Uh, mutual menstruation. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what it know. seems like? I don't know. It seems like we should rank these books. Okay. This book? This book. This one in particular? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have nothing but anger for it in my heart of hearts. What is our metric? But I do, I do want to say this, like... Is it bologna sandwiches? It, it was... <laughs> how about mayonnaise? Um, <laughs> oh, that must be like a reference to the cause audio. Because like, she was like so... No, that's how I say it. How do you say Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, mayonnaise. I don't know. So she... Wait, no, no, no. Wait, let's explore this because you made fun of me last time. I say mayonnaise. Uh-huh. I think that's the way you say it. What but do you I say, say? Sometimes I say mayonnaise. Sometimes I say mayonnaise. And the reason is because I dated... It was like the third the third <laughs> Dan that I dated said mayonnaise. But he would say it with such contempt that it was amusing to me. Like, mayonnaise. Like, he was so contempt. He was so angry with it. Like, he just couldn't understand why anyone would consume mayonnaise so he would say it like like with this like like vitriol which amused me because i, oh, I actually say, i say vitriol Ooh. is it vitriol or vitriol but I how do know. i say it you just said vitriol oh, for fuck's i was sake. like 
vitriol. I don't know why we're friends. We don't even talk the same way. <laughs> That's why we're friends. <laughs> because we need something to break up our echo chamber. Oh, cheers to echo chambers being broken. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So what was the thing <laughs> that we were talking about before? You were going to give us oh, our we're metric. we're going to break mayonnaise. I think we should do. Mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Okay. Mayo mayonnaise. Jars of mayonnaise. Oh, can I just close this to whole expiration thing? date? One of the weird things. Okay. Yeah. They get there. Mm-hmm. It's a vacant house. Yeah. They're surprised to even found bread, mayonnaise, turkey. As and, am I. Obviously, and, someone else is there. Right. Well, but obviously, there's not much in the fridge. Right. right. And then the next morning, he's like, "Oh, I found eggs. Like they were hiding." If that was all that was, nobody would miss a carton of eggs. Well, this girl obviously did not know her way around her. No, it's him. He's like, oh, I found. Where did you find them? Were they not in the fridge? That bothered me. Also, the whole thing. This was probably a red herring, but also was never explained. Also, I'm not going to throw out the only food we have. After he finds out that she's pregnant. Mm hmm. He's like, oh, you have to microwave all of the cold cuts. Yeah. She's like, how did you know that? And he's like. He hesitates. That's what the author writes. We don't know why he does it. I assumed it was because he had internet access this whole time. The whole time that he was on his laptop doing work. You know, so because that's what she made us believe is that he was gaslighting and orchestrating this whole thing for her. I didn't even think about that, but that that checks out. But it never explained how he just suddenly knew that pregnant women can't eat cold cuts. And then it never explains like like why he knew. Yeah. Like I was expecting to get like a follow up on that. Yeah, like he really wanted kids and he was actually fucking with her birth control right. like some shit yeah i thought he might be also not you know? only fucking with her birth control but suddenly right before she got married the magazine that she was working at went mm-hmm. belly up and she didn't have a job anymore so i thought like he had put them out of business or something all of that went nowhere so no. those red herrings were interesting like oh that's where, also, why didn't you know she what, move to New York? You know Are they in New York? Why didn't she move to New York? I thought Michelle. she was moving to New York. Michelle. What? You know what Frida did to us? She gaslighted us. Absolutely she did. All right, jars of mayonnaise. Out of how many? Ten. I'd give it four. Three? I'm not going to give it less than three. I feel fine with four. All right, so let me just go over this real quick. Mm-hmm. So the story was found in like a grammatical sense. There were periods and commas and punctuation, I think, because the... You didn't read the book. I didn't you can't. read it, but it <laughs> felt right to me. Uh, there wasn't, like, like the story itself was interesting. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to give it, like, nothing. I give... It's hard for me because, like, I feel like... Just go with your heart. This is like somebody's, somebody cared about this book. Somebody published it. I don't feel like she did. I feel like... Somebody found a cover for it. I feel like she it, had an idea in a notebook. And... I feel like she had an idea in the notebook. She needed to pump something out. She picked that idea and she went with it. And let me tell you, I've already said it, but I'll say it again, Frida. It deserved more. It deserved more. There's, like, a high chance that, like, fucking with me was, like, her whole, like, idea. Michelle Karsk. Um, yeah, like specifically Should me. I not say your full name? You can. Okay. I put it on the thing. Okay. Like, I think, I mean, it's possible that that was like her whole, like sometimes when I read some author's work, I'm like, is this just a fuck with me? Like, are you just literally trying to like screw with my head? Which is what she was doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? Generously, generously, mm-hmm. with generosity, mm-hmm. I'm going to say, Three. Okay. Jars of almost expired mayonnaise. <laughs> What's your favorite brand of mayonnaise? Um, I don't have a favorite brand of mayonnaise, mm. but Rob has a favorite brand. And so I buy that brand because I love Rob. And it is has a yellow top and it and Dukes. Dukes. Yeah. Okay. That's one. I'm fine with all mayonnaise mm-hmm. except for Kraft and... Miracle Whip, which is not mayonnaise. Honestly, I grew up with Miracle Whip, and I'm fine with it. But I do not buy Miracle Whip because I cannot eat it in the time it takes before it expires, and I I'm will just, eat mayonnaise just the same. And maybe part Rob of Rob likes mayonnaise, and so I love mayonnaise. I'll eat it. I'm from like spoon. fine. Mayonnaise. My is. problem with Miracle Whip is the same as my problem with grape nuts. You have a problem with grape nuts, and since we're talking about being lied to, okay, okay. I was told that Miracle Whip had a 
the tangy the sandwich just isn't the same without the tangy zip of Miracle Whip. Right. No, it's it's not the same, but in a very bad way. It's different. And also, I really thought grape nuts were going to be delicious. No, they were not. grapes. They're gross. And they were nuts. And I begged my mom for them, they're and disgusting. she wouldn't buy them because they're name brand. And then finally, one day, she was like, fine, we'll buy grape nuts. And I was so excited. Did you eat them all? No, I ate a spoonful and was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Who eats this? I would have totally eaten it and pretended that I liked it out of pride. I couldn't. My heart was broken. It would have been good for your heart. I, re- <laughs> I really thought that there was like some sort of <laughs> nugget of grape and nut flavor. All right. We're getting off topic. Okay. All right. So I do have a bookend. But before we do the bookend, I do want to remind listeners that we have one more episode left. One more episode left. <laughs> Which will be the uh, last Friday of next month. And it is going to be Lessons in Chemistry. By? By Bonnie G. Say it. Just say it if you know. No, it. I just Gam- know it's Gamon. Gamon? Gamon. Gamon? I don't know. You guys know the book, Lessons in Chemistry. And I should have looked it up before the podcast started. <laughs> I agree. I did not. Because <laughs> you put me on the spot. Um. So, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, That's on me. Totally. But anyway, we're excited. We have both read the book a long time ago. We're going to have to refresh um, and chat about that. So that's exciting. And maybe our views will adjust a little bit. Yeah, you guys totally read it if you haven't already. Like, speaking of number one books, that one's totally a number one book. All right, so I do have a bookend. So last time you gave me a lot of shade about these question answer things. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, Mm -hmm. we'll shake this up and we'll do something a little different. I didn't mean to give you shade. It's fine. So the bookend is... We'd gotten into a rut. Something different. So what's going to happen now is um, we're going to rate books. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say, the book is a 10, but this thing also happens. Oh, and that's, you, I've seen this. This is like a current thing, and I'm yeah. not a current person. You know, if I can do it, it's going to be fine. Fine. All right, so the first one is, this is going to be a real surprise. The book is a 10, but it has an unreliable narrator. Girl gone. Gone girl. Gone girl. <laughs> Just no, give me a number. Is what? it still a 10? Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. Say it again. The book is a 10, but it has an unreliable narrator. 15. You think that Gone Girl is a 10? No, no we're, I thought I've readjusted. Okay. All you're saying is the book itself is a 10. Right. And it has in this. addition, it has 15. All right. So I'm going to go with a 7. <laughs> the book is a 10, but it's not available in your preferred format. So audio, Kindle. Mm-hmm. Uh, six. Paperback six, two. Oh, do so I don't have an audiobook and I have uh, to read like, it? That's like going to a foreign country and expecting them to speak your language. Absolutely. I mean, actually, so that's don't not, be that person. That's not true. If I actually read a book, <laughs> I would probably <laughs> rate it better than that. But that's how I feel in my heart. Okay. All right. The book is ten, but the villain does not get their just desserts at the end. The book is a ten, but the villain mm. doesn't get what's coming to him. And I firmly believe the book is a 10. You believe it's a 10, except for... Okay, I can think of a few movies that the fall book into does, that category, like uh, No get. Country for Old Men comes okay. to mind. So I'm going to say 7. 10. I don't care. Mm. All right. The book is a 10. Okay, my heart wanted to say 4. Okay. But I appreciate craftsmanship. All right. Okay. The book is a 10, but the ending is left up to the reader. 12. I'm going to say 7. <laughs> the book is a 10, but the main character is an idiot. Lovable idiot? Idiot. Uh, I need more. Just stupid. No. They're dumb. Like a like a Matthew McConaughey, Paul Rudd. You just think that they do lovable, stupid things. Lo- I need to know if he's a lovable idiot or. You think that they, they do stupid things and they make stupid decisions. The book is a 10. All mm-hmm. right. I'm going to give it a 10. Same. The book, <laughs> the book is a 10, but the MC ends up with the wrong guy or girl at the end. So it's like you expected them to get with someone else, and they get with the wrong person. Two. Wow, yeah. that was a surprise. Yeah, I hate that shit. I'm going to go with an eight. It's like Ducky. Yes, it's like Ducky. Exactly, pretty mm, pink. No, that ruined the whole thing for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The book is a 10, but it leaves you in a place cliffhanger oh 
that's hard because if I can trust that the next books are coming, I'm okay. But if the books aren't coming, I'm not okay. So I'm going to say if the book is a 10, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it at a 10. I always knock a point off for that. So nine. I'm surprised it's not more because you hate to be left in a place. This next one. Uh The book is a 10, but the sequel never comes out. Zero. No, (laughs) wait. No, that's not fair. That that was my heart. Let me balance it. (laughs) Three. I'll give it a three. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to go with a four. And I'm out. I'm four is the most generous I can be. (laughs) Patrick Rothfuss. A four for me, too. Okay. Okay. The book is a 10, but you figured out the twist in chapter three. Five. Ooh, I need the writer to be smarter than me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to say seven. Okay. The book is a 10, but you don't agree with the politics. Mm. My heart wants to know it'll be like one. But my brain knows that echo chamber, as we discussed, should mm-hmm. be broken. So I'm going to say... The book is a 10, but you don't agree with the politics. Mm-hmm. Eight. I'm going to have to go a little lower. <laughs> I'm thinking like six. Okay, but the book is the... Okay. All right. the, okay. The book is a 10. The book is a 10, but the author has done something you don't agree with. Meaning? Meaning... Killed someone you loved? Killed someone you loved, or spoke out against an issue that you care about, or... Um, robbed a bank. Eight. 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 I'm thinking of J.K. Rowling. Well, J.K. Rowling, okay. I mean, I'm probably going to... I still gonna, love him. I'm probably going to go with like a four. Although Dumbledore shouldn't have died. And, mm. you know, Snape should have been recognized. Well, what's his And she on, shouldn't be a turf. Let's, so let's eight. Let's disagree on Snape. The book <gasps> is a ten. Whoa, whoa. No, we can't. No. But everyone loves it. Uh-huh. And you found out about it last. It's a really great book. Everybody loves it. And you're the last one to know. Ten. That one. The book is a ten, what? but everyone hates it. No, wait. What, what was yours? Ten. Okay. The book is a ten, but everybody hates it. Twenty. Because I have to make up for that <laughs> bullshit of people not understanding. I'm still at a ten. The book is a 10, but the sexual tension is never resolved. 10. I don't care about that. I fucking care about that. Six. Mm. The book is a 10, but it's 50% sex scenes. Oh, if it's a 10, it must be really good sex scenes for me, (laughs) which is hard to do. So if I found one like that, 20. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go with a a 10. A book is a 10, but it's 90% dialogue. 11. I love dialogue. Same. I was thinking 15. (laughs) (laughs) The book is a 10, but the sex scenes are not spicy. How much does a book rely on sex scenes? I don't know. Let's say it's a romance book. Okay. Well, okay. If it's not meant to be gratifying me in a sexual way... I'm going to say 10. Same 10. If it's meant to be gratifying me in a sexual way, no author sh- should have that responsibility. So <laughs> never mind. 10. 10 across the board. Okay. Well, uh, that's all I've got. So <laughs> I guess if you can find a book that satisfies you sexually, <laughs> do that. But until then, eat, eat the, the books, books, motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 